We ain't gon' stop until we fuck them all Even if they want it yours Cause a nigga stay mackin' And if he jump stupid, we gon' smack him Oh uh. Like a motherfuckin' animal Like a motherfucking animal <laughs> Real fuckers know the drinks don't love And the women don't taste right When you be that fucker Never showing them your brake lights Flash the Mac attack on them And treat them just like stage lights And one pose and frozen They react like they got stage fright When I take a number I'ma end her like I take life Kick that jockstrap rap cause even Hey, 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 Hubies, what's happening, Hubies? I'm back, I'm back, we're back again. Another episode of Rehub, Ridiculous Human Beings, and we are in the trust tree, in the friendly nest, at the goddamn zoo. You understand me? And it's always, it's always always it's always a wonderful day at the motherfucking zoo and uh let's just get right into it with this segment of highland high what's up guys how's it going i just wanted to talk to y'all real quick um about failure and success <clears throat> and i was uh i was listening to gary you play your throat morning, before you do the video and what i realized is that while life is complex in nature it's also simplistic Huh. Right. So, starting off real profound. Of Clear happens, your throat before um, you do the video. For us in life is that we uh, we try to accomplish something, right? Right. And we're met by some successes, some failures. Of course. However, far too many of us allow our lives and our endeavors thereafter to be defined by our failure. Right. Okay. And here's the deal. Anyone that has accomplished anything knows that in order to truly be successful, right, you're gonna fail. Now, whether you Is fail right? hard, whether you fail soft or... Um, oh, failing hard and soft. That's not like a different forward, subject right? for a different time. So, as long as you're learning something as a result of that which um, you're trying to accomplish, to me, I don't see it as a failure, right? I see that as you okay. learning a lesson. So, don't let your so failures define you, but there's no failure. Some of us become Got it. so defined by our failure that, don't that we can't allow... Well, we, we don't allow our lives, rather, to be redefined by success because we're so dedicated to being defined by failure. Okay, right? that doesn't Oh, I exist. can't accomplish this because this person wasn't around, or oh, I can't accomplish this because these this voices person's again. not supporting me. When really and truly, you're stopping yourself. You're so dedicated to you know this ideology that you're going to fail, right? And uh, I realize that uh, sometimes our power is in our words. Right. Uh -huh. So okay. when you consistently and other say, oh, times, this sounds too good to be true, punch in the face. true, or this opportunity is too good to be true. How about right? always a punch in the face? You're you're setting yourself up for failure because that now doesn't you're exist putting it in your because mind you just that learned from it. Either you, one, you, you don't that deserve the opportunity. Two is you know definitely you know too good to be true. Don't get me wrong. Some opportunities are way more flashier, or people try to make them seem like flashy. they're way more flashier than what they truly are. Way more However, flashier. When you speak goodness into the atmosphere of, you know what, this person uh, may be trying to get over on me. They're kind of um, bullshit. But I'm not going to allow that to define me because why? You know, I'm all about good energy, good vibes, and things of that nature, right? So any opportunity that Piling comes on my the way, bullshit. I'm going to seize it. And to the best of my ability, I'm going to make sure that I maximize this opportunity. Oh, yeah. So in that, right, we have to continue to give ourselves positive affirmations. You know, I am <laughs> strong, I am beautiful, I am smart, I am confident. Those types I of am things, woman. Right? So then you, there, uh, thereafter, you redefine what you um, know to be true about not just yourself, but about what it is that you're trying to do. Oh, I will succeed. I will survive. This is a kindergarten classic right, right here, my, baby. Uh, one of my life mantras. And I say that to myself whenever I'm, you know, engaging in an endeavor. Because to me, uh, the more I speak positivity over it, the more positive vibes and the more positive energy that's going to come my way. But the more I say, you know what, this isn't going to... Nah, this isn't going to be successful. It, there's truly a, a, a difference between being realistic. And nothing being ever right? works. So there's nothing wrong with being realistic. In a way that this guy did not expect, uh, I guess. Optimist you'll ever meet, right? Every time he says something I isn't going to work, work, it just doesn't right? work. Every time he says it will work, it does right? work. So I don't want to limit uh, 
the opportunities that I have and or diminish the value of what could possibly go wrong. However, um, expecting the value as of well what as could possibly go wrong. Do my what best is that? To make every opportunity um, a good one. So oftentimes what happens is mm -hmm. we we take ourselves out of the game before even allowing ourselves to get hot. Don't play right? games. I don't know if you've ever uh, watched a basketball game. Don't play game. games. You'll see a player who, uh, in the beginning, they might be a little rusty, right? Shoot a couple shots. Oh, he got bricked. He bricked a little bit. Oh, <laughs> you know, shoot a couple more shots. Oh, he bricked a little bit. Whose voice but is then, this? Once he gets on, bricked a little boom, bit. He on fire. She on fire. And they can't miss. Why? Because they in a zone now. And a lot of us don't allow ourselves to get in the zone because we take ourselves out of the game. You know what, coach? I need a breather. When really and truly, don't all play you need is two more minutes to, to be able to really get focused and get into the grind and get into, you know, the, the, the oomph of things that you take the yourself out of the game before things. you allow yourself the opportunity to get hot. So I just want to encourage somebody out there, stop defining yourself by failure. Stop defining yourself by that which uh, you think that stop you can accomplish. Stop telling me what to do. Because here's the reality, guys. You can accomplish it. You can be successful. Mm-hmm. You can't obtain that which you want, or would like to obtain. Kindergarten the class. The more you tell yourself you can't, the more you allow other people to tell you that you can't. Is the more you're going to be defined by your failure. Is the more that you're going to be dedicated to this ideology that you cannot succeed, that you cannot survive, and that you you'll end up being a statistic, a statistic of those that started statistics something on and both sides, finish. success and failure. A statistic of someone that uh, was chasing after a goal and gave up. But I want to encourage somebody out there right now. Don't be defined by your failure. Allow yourself to be redefined by success. Be cognizant of failure and keep on grinding. I love you guys. Remember, God is peace. God is love. God is everything. I love you guys. A lot, Have of, a good one. A lot of L bombs. He told us once already, twice is too many times. Way too many times. The once was was too many times. Okay. And, I, and I'm going to go ahead and call bullshit on that right there. Please be defined by your failure. Like, do it. Fucking do it. You know what I'm saying? At the very least, you know, but most people are lacking the understanding of the best of the worst. And you could definitely be that. You know, be it that you're defined by failing harder. You know, or maybe failing the lightest of all the failures. And I don't think anything he said in his video accounts for that right there, you know, because that's just a realistic item. You know, you're going to fail. Yes. And you can certainly be de 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 defined by your failures. You can be defined by anything you do. OK, and even if you are defined by what you consider a failure, it does not always denote an overall failure. In being defined by your failure, you could achieve fame nowadays. Which in turn would make your failure a success, which would then make everything that that guy just said complete and total bullshit. But it was probably that before he even started, so it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Nobody matters. Fuck it. You understand me? So what I'm doing right now, I'm 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 running through uh, Ben Box things, to see what he got going on. I don't think he didn't post nothing too new, too recently. So we're gonna have to go back, back, back to the back, 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 and see if we can find something that we ain't listened to before, so that we could get on with our presentation of Ben Back words coming up right the fuck now. You know what I'm saying? But 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 while we look for that, I got to tell you guys that I'm going to tell you about my weekend on this podcast. If you feel like my voice sound a little bit rugged, that's because it is, man. I was screaming and things and uh, it was some good party moves. So uh, I really just fucking uh, just shot my voice, man. You know, but it's all good because we like to have that kind of fun. You know what I'm saying? That's the fun that we want right there. We just kill the whole voice. What do you need it for? You know, I'm not a yelling ass motherfucker. You feel me? So when I go out and I yell up and stuff, I lose my voice. I just do it. It just happens. You understand me? So we're going to get into Ben backwards right here. I don't even know if we heard this already or what, but fuck it, man. That's what this podcast is. This is a big fuck it. 
You understand me? And that's just the way we're we going to roll. Especially today. Because this is a fuck it kind of day. I feel like. I'm out here again with this hope, this encouragement, and this motivation, guys. I'm super pumped up and geeked up. It's been so long since I've talked to you guys. But look, man. Big game. Uh, I was in... D no, where was I? I where was the fuck Detroit, were you, bro? I was in Flint, Michigan. I was in Michigan. He doesn't know where he like, was. Do you know where you are I'm now? I'm certified. Now I'm your billionaire and love coach, man. I'm all about execution at He's this point He's a love time. coach. But it's just like I wanted to tell you guys about a story. Like, I, I don't know. I've just been attracted <laughs> oh. to some really awesome people into my life. So what I is that? I like two hours on a flight back home about life and all that other stuff. And she was Why really did you talk to a stranger for two hours? Story, really it, just like, it just boosted my confidence through the roof. Right, the story guys? touched right, you. I'm did you get molested by a story? Teacher or leader that she really admires and respects, man. And she's Who's doing that? her best to get like the spiritual leader. This is right, already guys? amazing. And basically, she was just like, yo, the spiritual leader, she's like so humble, right? So many people admire her, respect humble. her, but Fuck she's being humble. humble, man. And what she said is like her life's mission is to go around giving people hugs. So she's like, all she do is hug people. Twenty well, whenever she's awake, what she's doing is hugging people. Like Sounds that's, that's her job. Weird. But then she said something deep about it as well. She said when she meets people, she bows down to them. And she was like, no ego. She's just like, this person is not better than me. I'm not better than that person, but I'm bowing down to him. And she said the okay, reason why please she tell bows us why. down to the there person is she, she's um, mm -hmm. not the ego. She's giving praise or she yeah, she's giving expect or she is admiring expect. the light that's within that person. Like that person's soul, the essence of who that person is. Like okay. they, they were they are a creation of God and that's what she respects about that person. So when she sees the person So that's probably is the sees. ego that that person is human, a creation of God's and she loves and it re and reminds that right? She's just re looking straight at their soul. Did he make that's a word up? Reminds doing, that is it supposed to be admire? Feeling. She's like, I love and I appreciate you because you're a human, you're alive, and you're a creation of God. And it's just like that 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 made a connection for me, right? And it's just oh, like, did it? I'm so confident. Please tell now, me how. Because I remember, um, Cause that's I just weird. Both of y'all are weird to together. Better than other people. What I realized, yo, we're all equal in this thing. And it's just like, yo, once you realize, I don't know about like, equal. Ain't man. nobody better than you. You aren't better than anybody else. You operate completely differently, right? So I was listening to um, Jay Z. So he said it twice, Rick. He said it twice. All right. Um, it was a Breakfast Club interview. My man Al shared it with me. He he was talking like people was okay. just like, "Yo, Jay Z, the reason why you a success right now is because um Biggie's not alive or something like that." He made all these excuses and stuff like that as to why Jay Z is successful right now. And Jay Z is pretty much like, "Oh, that's nonsense. Whoever these people was alive or not, like I'll still be great." Okay. And he said, and Jay Z was like, "Yo, there's two different mindsets people got." Jay Z is like, "Oh, One, just two. Somebody's gonna see my success and they're gonna be like, "Yo, I'm gonna be just like Jay." Right. It's just like I'm do whatever it takes. I got greatness in me. It's just like I just got to follow these proven success principles. I'm going to get it. I'm be there. He Whoa, said there's what the are same those? person that's going to look at the same situation. He's going to be like, yo, your success means my failure because you succeeded. I can't win. And Jay-Z said, like, I, you, you could believe that, but that's foolishness. He's like, yo, I'm not better than you. He said it in murder to excellence. He's just like, yo, when you see me, see you like, yo. We are all great. We okay. are all we're getting a whole like, uh, once you realize the truth of how great Jay -Z you are, lesson there's right nothing now. you can't do, be, or have, or accomplish. And you just got to realize, it's like, yo, nobody's better than you. But at the same time, realize you're better than nobody else. And when you see people that way, I don't you know, bro. completely different. And here's the last thing. Um, so Let that ego run right. wild, you know, if it's all bringing right. you what yeah, you need. Don't let me already. <laughs> all right. Did he forget um, what he was going to say? <laughs> What did he say? <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Uh, that, that, was, that was pretty pretty much it, though, honestly. It's just like, just the idea that understanding, like, yo, we are all equal. We are all kids of God. It's just like, yo, yo, when you realize, like, how great you are, how phenomenal you are, and you're not comparing yourself to other people, you just compare yourself to your best self. It's just like, oh, yo, you yo, really forgot what he was going to say. Like, and, I mean, this morning, actually, and one of my mentors, she was just like, yo, everybody wants to be somebody. Just make sure that somebody is the best version of you. I'm going to say that again. He said, everybody uh, wants to be somebody. Make oh sure that somebody God. is the best version of you. Like, yo, we are great. We're phenomenal. We're incredible. Best just version. Like, just, just admit that to yourself. Find out Very you subjective. Are. Deep inside, realize how great you are. Like, nobody else is better than you. Nobody can do more than you. It's just like, you can do whatever it is. And I remember what I wanted to say was Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs said it best. He was just like, just want to say his name? Realize 
that everything that's on this earth, everything that was created, everything that you realize in life was created by somebody no better than you, game changes like airplanes, social media, businesses, oh, is everything. That right? Like they were created by a human. And guess what? You're a human. So you just like <laughs> tap these buttons, man. He just let you guys know that you're a human. We get high phones, right? Because that's what you need. We get laptops. We get all these amazing things. And we can't wait to start playing with that's these That's motivation, baby. But look, yo, you human, it's just like, yo, start ticking. It's just like once you feel like, uh, realize what uh, what gets you ticking, what, what are makes you saying? You happy, what can make you wealthy, what you're what really are these words of, feel like? like? You're better than any gadget you could ever buy. You're better than any car out there. You're better than any house out there. You're better than any material possession out there. Like those material possessions can be replaced. You cannot be replaced. There's never going to be another human like you. Like, so realize how unique you are. So thanks again, guys. Now we're getting into the kindergarten up, classics. Setting standards defy odds and dominate. We step up, setting standards defy odds and dominate. Why, guys? Because, look, dreams do come true. But, number one, we have to dream it. Number two, we have to believe it, guys. And, number three, we got to grind every single day. Don't grind. Until we achieve it. Just thanks work. So for listening, guys. I love you. I appreciate oh, you. Oh, them too. With it. these L bombs. Oh, where else? You man, Ben? My fault. Wow. Well, that that was a lot, a lot for nothing. I feel like, all right. I guess the only thing I really learned from there is that I'm a human. You know, shout to you, Hubies, for also being humans, probably. But I will say sometimes I see the things that humans do, and I don't know why they're doing it. So I feel like I'm not a human. I can't be. I can't be the same as that person. You know. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe use a human, maybe not. You know, but it doesn't fucking matter. Because you're a human anyway. And you're in the friendly nest in the trust tree at the fucking zoo. And let's make the zoo a wonderful place. Okay, speaking of wonderful places, I had a, I had a fucking weekend this weekend. All right, did a lot of things, went a lot of places, man. And, uh, I'm fucking tired. I probably was gonna look that way on the video podcast, man. I yawned a little bit too, I think. You know what I mean? I'm fucked right now. You know, but I'm here for the Hubies. Here for the goddamn Hubies. So let's run it down for you first. Friday, Friday. Yo, shout to Dennis, man. Skinny Dennis. You know, shout to Skinny Dennis. It was his birthday, man. We made a move. We went to those little strip club movement. Went to the booty club. You feel me? He liked that kind of shit. You feel me? And going to the booty club is always, always fucking weird for me. You know, and, and I'm not going to say it's just a me, a me thing, but of course, I'm only me. I only know really what's going on with me. It's always a weird thing, son. And I don't know what it is about me. You know, maybe I just look like some impressionable little dude. But when I be in there, man, these them strippers be calling me out early. Early, I don't even be, I, I ain't get no money yet, you know what I'm saying? I don't got nothing in my hands yet. And they call me out early, almost reserving a spot, like, yeah, that one, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I should interpret that as, you know what I'm saying, like, they, they feel like there's something about me, they they want to fuck with it, or if I just look like an easy mark, and they just make the mark every fucking time, you feel me? Is that what that is? I don't fucking know, not a stripper. All right, not a stripper. And that just remind me of something else. And hopefully I remember it by the end of this bullshit talk right here. Um, so we go to the strip club, man. And we're just throwing money in there and shit. That's it. That's what the strip club is, man. You go in there and you throw money. If you don't have money to throw, I would urge you not to go to the strip club, man. Now, it was a fucking dude factory in there. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times you go to a strip club, it's going to be women. Women be there. You understand? For different reasons. And we were thinking maybe we could just run into some strip club joints. You know what I mean? Not actual strippers, but women who's just at the strip club. That was not a thing. Not that night, at least. So it was just a dude extravaganza. You know what I'm saying? But what's to be expected? It's women taking their clothes off. You know, dudes are going to come. They're going to come around. Pause. Oof. So, uh, we in the shit. And I, you know, 
and I'm on my smooth, and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm tossing up money out, cause you know these ladies gotta make their money. Got body little baby some pop tarts, man. So I'm 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 just whipping pop tart money. You know what I'm saying? And I and 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 when you know the girls get on you sometimes, and they they back up on you, and they and they drop some ass on you. That's you know what I mean how that goes. And when they do that, I actually dance with them. You know, like fuck it, I'm throwing money at you. You know, basically I'm paying for this. This is gonna go how I want it to go. You know, and the chick was laughing when I was dancing with her. You know what I'm saying? If, you know, if you if you saw it, it was it was definitely funny. It's always funny. And um, she said she turned around and she said, "You like all in sync with me and shit." And that made me sad. All right, that made me fucking sad because I guess this woman just been taking her clothes off for dudes for so long. That she probably forgot that uh, guys can probably really dance, you know, and and dance with you, you know. And I will say it, I just I didn't see another guy doing that either, you know. So she probably just hadn't danced with a man in a long time, you know, to the point where she said, "I was all in sync with her." She she forgot the words that mean dancing with with you, you know, dancing together. You know, she forgot those words. And that's sad, man. So I feel like I'm going to open up a fucking, a, a, a fucking, what do you call it? A nonprofit organization just to save the strippies, man. Save them. Save those little angels, you know, who are being deprived of all kinds of dancing, you know, and, and, and just normal attention from guys that they might want. You know what I'm saying? You could just get a, a whole, it's just a whole foundation dedicated to, oh shit, fucking fly, uh, dedicated to just getting these men in this room with this woman, just these women, just to do normal things, you know? Just hold their hand, walk in circles. You know what I'm saying? Just tell them they look nice, you know, without asking for anything else. You know, dance with them. To the music that's playing and they don't have to drop no ass or take off their clothes you know and for just 25 cents a day you could sponsor one of the strippies you know what i mean and make sure that one guy a day is giving them a compliment that has nothing to do with their bodies and even at the end of this speech i still feel like it's a good ass fucking idea okay so that was that. That was Friday, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what time we got back. You know what I'm saying? I just wasn't watching the clock all weekend. It's just been so fucked. All of it's just one day. You know, so so fuck that. We get we, we, we get home or whatever and everything's a wrap. Everything's a done deal. And I wake up in the fucking afternoon the next day. Even though I tried to plan to wake up in the fucking morning that day so that I could get things done. Day was done. It was it wasn't happening. It was a fuck you weekend. Nothing's getting done. All right, because on a Saturday I had to go to another party that night, you know, and and it, and it got crazy because I went to the I was ready to go to the party and then somebody told me last minute, thankfully, you know that the venue changed, the venue changed the day of the party. You know that's crazy, that's fucking crazy. And what did the venue change to? I kid you not, it was a fucking rec center at a goddamn church. Just soak that up for a second. It was looked like the rec center at a fucking church. It was definitely at a church. You know, but it was a big ass open space. So it looked like they had a little rec center in there that they that they used for whatever the fuck. I don't know. It might even been the, the main fucking room or whatever where the congregation be at and shit. Don't know. But it was a large empty space in a fucking church, man. It's the first time I've ever done that. Real life party and in the fucking church. There was it was bottle service, you know what I mean? And fucking hookah. We smoking up the church crazy. Crazy smoking up the church. Did that bother me? No, it did not. Did not. Not at all. Just a little bit strange. That's it. And when we was in there, we saw a shorty. See this let me tell you some shit that goes down. And I've only ever seen this in Brooklyn clubs. Okay? They never have enough fucking space. Never have enough space. You 
know, because it'd be bottle service up and down the shit. So they never have enough tables, never have enough space. So what they end up doing a lot of times is basically putting the bottles and shit on the floor for people to put the hookah on the floor. You know, and people just huddle around and stand around the thing. Weird. Gets weird. And there was a chick who looked like she bought some hookah. Get the fucking fly, man. As a chick looked like she bought some hookah. You know, and she was smoking it up off the floor. She's got it on the floor. And uh, look, if you're going to be floor smoking, you just, you got to chill out. You know what I mean? You got to fall back. You have to behave like a person who's doing something that's normally done on the table on the floor in a public place. That's what you have to behave like. Was she doing that? She wasn't. She was smoking a hookah and she was like dancing and she was dancing crazy. All right. She was looking like she was looking for somebody's attention in there. Okay. She's dropping ass. Stupid. She's fucking crawling like she's on the floor with her butt in the air. Basically. You know, with the it's still floor smoking the hookah. And the shit was just funny, man. Like normally it would be a woman doing something like that would be sexy. It'd be a sexy thing, you know what I'm saying? And maybe somebody would be trying to run up, but nobody was trying to run up because that shit was just fucking funny. It was just and only fucking funny, man. Because even sexy is funny, you know what I mean, in the wrong space and time. You have to do things the right way. And sexy is one of those things you you have to do the right way. Have to. But she didn't do it the right way. There was also a lot of naked chicks in there, yo. They was pulling up to that party wild naked. You know, which made me feel like I didn't get the memo or something. That it was going to be a naked party. There was one chick who looked like she had a whole titties out. Like she was wearing like a net up top or something. Like a, like a half shirt net. Crop top net. You know what I'm saying? And obviously had some big fakies moving up top. You know what I'm saying? No beef with it. If that's your smooth, do your thing. You know, and if you bought them things, I'm sure you got you got to show them off. You know, that's the dilemma with fake body parts. You know, you bought them things, you got to show them off. You got to get your money's worth, you know. And that's when it starts getting weird. You know, so she did that. And it was obviously big fakies. You know what I'm saying? Because any, 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 any uh, titty connoisseur. You know what I'm saying? A breastesis uh, connoisseur, you know, knows that gravity always affects breasts. It, it doesn't affect every set of breasts the same way, but there's always fucking gravity. Now, when your breasts start to defy said gravity, come on now. Come on now. We know. We fucking know, man. You know, but shout out to her. You know, she 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 got him and she flown at him. You know what I'm saying? So we just we just chilled out in their fucking church party, man. It was actually pretty cool. And that's okay with me. You know, but uh today even and it would be Sunday for me, you know, even though it's Monday for you, it would be Sunday for me. Uh it's just a three day. It's a fucking marathon, and we went to a day party. All right, now I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't care for day party and mimosa and shit. I don't do no mimosa. You know for what? For what? For fucking what? You know I don't know. I'm not doing it. Uh, orange juice and liquor. Like for what? Why do I want the breakfast version of alcohol for? Alcohol comes in one form. You know, you get it out the bottle and you put it in a cup and you drink the shit. I don't need a breakfast, lunch, and dinner version of alcohol, okay? Just give me the regular wine. Hey, yard it over here. Tell you it fucking hurt. So, so, so we, uh, we fucking, we at the day party. And I don't understand. It's another thing that I don't understand about women. You know what I'm saying? Why is it, why is it that women get so, or are just much more comfortable at day parties? Why? I don't understand it. Why is the idea of partying during daylight, even though you're not seeing the daylight, comforting to women? 
somebody help me with that. Okay? Because you could see a woman in a party the night before acting mad stanky. And you see her in a day party the next day. And she's with her homegirls getting crazy. Getting crazy. They're drinking all the mimosas. You know. And they want to stand on table and bar and shit. Like for what? I don't get it. Because. And I'm not saying that you can't have a good time at parties. Like by all means do that. Do exactly that. You know. But why can't you do this daytime version of you? Just at the night. You know what I'm saying? Just at night. In the night time. What the fuck is the difference? You know, why do you want to be fun only during the daylight? Because I went to this day party and I just and I just did the same shit I always do at parties because it's just a fucking party. <laughs> yeah. So women must be plants. You guys just get this this storing up all that sunlight, you know, energy. That's what you got from it. Fucking energy. That's why they do the day parties. You know, and, and what we see in there is just them expending that sun energy, sun rays, pew, pew, everywhere, laser beam, pew, pew, fucking it up. That's got to be it. We learned something today. Women are plants. Flowers even. Maybe that's why we give women flowers, you know, or call them a flower. You know, because they obviously run on daylight. Obviously. Obviously. You know, one more thing about women that I just I just won't ever understand. And that's okay. You know, because you don't need to understand women. You know, you just got to like them a lot. And then okay things will happen. All right, and I remember I had to say, I was talking about strip club, and I said I wanted to say something. Now, I'm I'm a city guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm a city guy. Hum, city, guy. All right, and I went south. I went to college. I went south. And the strip club culture down there, for one, is just a whole different thing. Just a whole different thing. You know what I mean? A different, wonderful thing. But it spills over so hard that the guys do stripper shit. Like, regular guys are expected to do stripper type shit. Like, the amount of times that I've witnessed, like, men putting a woman in a chair, like, even at a party or at some kind of celebration or event or whatever, putting a woman in a chair and doing, like, stripper shit on her is was fucking explosive. All right? I had never witnessed that in the city. Never. You know, but it seemed like it came with the territory. Like we're just growing up, we're just coming of age. There was a whole element of having to learn stripper moves, guys, stripper moves, so that you can perform them when somebody randomly just just dunks a fucking table in a, in the middle of a crowd of people, not a table, a chair. You know, and it has, and if and if it sounds insane to you, I get it. You know, but it has happened plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? Somebody would come out of nowhere with a fucking chair. You know what I mean? And then that's make me think too. Like who it, who has this chair in the cut? There's no chairs in the whole party. We find a one folding chair. <laughs> fucking where? Fucking where did you get it from? Okay? It's got to be a guy they must hire. Like it's his job. He's hiding in the cut with a folding fucking chair. Just for those times. You know what I mean? The party heating up nice. DJ got something real smooth going on. Boom. That's his cue. Folding chair. Whip out. Slam down. Boom. And once they slam down the chair, you know, a, a woman who, who wanted to be serviced, I guess, would immediately just sit her ass in that fucking chair. You know? And then it was just all on people's personal merits. You know, she sit her ass in that chair. Whatever dude feel like, you know, he has something to prove to her. He just pop out, pop out and do stripper shit, stripper moves. You know what I mean? And you know what? 
I just lied to y'all. I seen that happen in the city before. I was there when it happened. <laughs> oh, this is why I like to talk because it just reminds me of shit. I was there and it was my guys. <laughs> oh, no. No, we had a little house party. Oh, no. And some woman, some woman popped up. And they was with the shits. We was fucking with them. They was with the shits. And, um, and, um, they put Shorty in the chair. Now, the chair, now, I can tell you where this chair came from. It was just a chair that was in the crib. The shit was an old chair. It was type wobbly. <laughs> Why did we use that chair? <laughs> wasn't a folded chair it was a wooden chair and you know that's the worst things to always use because they always the, the screws always coming out and they always chipping up and they eventually just go under and fucking wooden chairs man and it was a wooden chair it was type wobbly had the wobbles on it so she they so she she sat herself in the chair you know what i'm saying and, and one of my guys got on it you know, and he's going hard. And if and if you ever seen, you know what I'm saying, like regular guys do some uh, male stripper shit pose, like, you know, you know what I'm saying, and it was these kind of setup, they they be going hard, you know what I'm saying, if it's them because they really feel like they got to get this done, you know, and which I don't understand it, you know what I mean, and I, and I never will, and, and I don't care. So uh, he's going hard, you know. He just goes hard to the point where the chair tips back. <laughs> the chair tips back, backwards. And I, it is, and that's like I could see her falling in slow motion, you know. And it, and it's just my guys is there. Nobody's really close to them because you don't want to be on top of them while they doing any stripper shit. So everybody just had to kind of try to dive in. And then and then boy who was doing the stripper shit, he's just snatching at her, you know. But she's just falling back so hard because that chair had the wobbles. That chair was Godwin. There was no recovery. You know what I'm saying? And I, and shorty dead just bust her whole head. <laughs> whole head you know and it was like the chair had a little bit of a back on it so the the, the the shit probably came up to like the bottom of her head so it's like her head her head like the chair hit the ground probably shocked her head up and bounced her head off the back of the chair too it was bad man it was some basketball level boop boop fuck shit man <laughs> And that's why, you know, don't do male stripper shit because it's dangerous. It's dangerous, Hubies. Okay? I care about your health. I care about your life. And male stripper shit is fucking dangerous, man. Fucking dangerous, dude. That's why you don't see that going going crazy too much. You know, it's always a woman thing with the strippers and shit because male stripper shit is fucking dangerous. Wow. That was so stupid, man. The fact that we would do that was just so stupid. But you got to do stupid things. You know, you have to. And that's just, that's just because that's what just makes life, you know, do, do very entertaining things. When you do something stupid, you have to do something stupid. You know, speaking of, you know, in my, in my travels around the city, you know, like y'all know that I have, like I know that I do. Came across something that was kind of weird, man. It was a, it was a homeless guy. You know, and don't, don't uh, get it confused here. I'm not looking to berate or degrade the homeless. You know, but y if you was a human being and you got some ridiculous shit happening, you're gonna be on this podcast. You know what I mean? You can be on this podcast. Use a rehub. You're gonna, you're gonna be on this podcast. Okay, homeless or not. You know, the outside Hubies, you know what I'm saying, who don't even ever listen to this, they, I, acknowledge, I acknowledge them too. You know, and this guy was a homeless guy. And I realized that only because he's sitting on a, in like a, a small chair, you know. And if, you don't, if you're not familiar with New York City subway, uh, 
it's a small chair that that just it's like two people in a, in a in a close quarters in a tight space. He was sitting on that, and no fucking body wanted to sit next to him. <clears throat> so I just took a good look at him, and it's definitely a guy. You know, he had his hood on. He's he's knocked out sleep because it's warm on the train, and um, he had a beard coming out the bottom bottom of the hoodie is his chin. It's definitely a guy, but this guy had his nails painted. You know, nails painted like a blood red. You know, or what them call ox blood, probably. I don't know. Okay. And uh, I just couldn't understand what that was. Like, I'm sure this man, and this is like, this is the epitome of first world shit. And I used that for something else earlier this week, but fuck it. Everything's the epitome. It's just first world shit. Our homeless people are getting their nails done. That's what's going on with us over here. Why though? For what? You know what I mean? And I only really know, you know and there wasn't no condition or nothing like that because I could see the fucking shit chipping off. You know what I'm saying? So he had got it done some time ago. And this wasn't like an effeminate looking dude or nothing. His son was looking rugged with a beard. You know what I'm saying? And painted nails, red, blood red, painted nails. You know what I'm saying? Was that weird for me? Absolutely was. Absolutely was. But did I hope that the painted nails served whatever the purpose was i absolutely did absolutely did you know whatever you got from painting those nails more power to you bro you know and i wish more of it for you you feel me but let's get down to some real business right now now we ran another ad uh last week and it was about some transgender things that i said in in a, a fairly recent podcast it might have been the number seven okay and People have been eating that shit the fuck up. And it's so fucking funny. Because this podcast is free. All right. The trust tree is fucking free. You know. And let me tell you that a thousand times. The trust tree is fucking free. And I, and there's some people on, on. You know who comment on the Facebook. Because there's so much. So many different. It's a, a widespread. You know when it comes to the comments on there. And it's, it's, it's almost always fucking hilarious i if you if you use a hubie uh jump in on the facebook page you know and and just check the comments on the videos with the high views on them you know and i promise you you'll get some laughs out of there i fucking promise you and uh what people are doing now is that uh when they don't agree with me or when i'm arguing them down too bad or when i'm just just delivering the smokings and the roastings okay they are giving me like a one star. The, the Facebook page thing has a recommendation thing. You know, you can get a, a rating, a star rating to say who people recommend you. And they have been giving me the one recommend, the one star saying, you know, they don't recommend the podcast or whatever. And then they'll say their piece. You know what I'm saying? And, and what they don't get is this podcast is fucking free. Don't need your recommendation, stupid. Not selling anything. Don't need your recommendation. Videos are on there for what? For free. Don't need your goddamn recommendation. All right? Don't need it. They really thought that they was like getting me when they did that. Sticking it to me. Because they get to do the one star and then they get to write something. You know? And I don't think they understood or they didn't factor in the fact that once they do that and they get to write something and they do the, the uh, recommendation I can fucking reply to it <laughs> now normally if a company is selling some shit and you give them a bad score or uh, you don't give them recommendation whatever they'll they'll try to come with some sweet shit you know what I'm saying with the shit oh sorry you had that experience you know maybe if you do these things it'll be better maybe next time we give you a discount something you know what I'm saying some fuck shit like that you think you get on a discount on this free fucking podcast? Is that what you think? Okay. Who the fuck do you think I am? I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm the chef. All right. I'm the chef. Okay. I'm the chef. I, I live in a free world. Okay. And in that free world, there's a giant free fucking kitchen 
okay? And you were there, and you were there, and you with your one-star recommendation, you were there, okay? And there's a menu, and there's a billion things on the menu. We got something for everybody. You understand me? We got the vegan beef, all right? We got chicken beef, duck beef. We got beef for every fucking body. You understand me? On this free ass fucking podcast in the free world in a free kitchen. Uh, okay? And when you walk into the free fucking kitchen, you come in and I don't ask you shit. I don't ask you what you want or how I may help you. I already know the answer to that shit. Okay? You come in and you pick something off the fucking menu. Okay, because you don't get to tell me what you want. You don't just get to make some shit up. You got to pick from what I already fucking got there. You understand me? In the free fucking kitchen, on this free fucking podcast, with the free food I'm giving out. I'm giving out for free. Okay? And the one thing I never fucking ask you, when you order up some of the free food, is how you want that shit prepared. You come in and you start talking your shit about, oh yeah, I would like a fried food. Fuck that. Oh, okay. I wouldn't. Uh, if you could, if you could get a steamed, fuck you. Okay. Everything in the free fucking kitchen is either smoked or roasted. Cause you could get this free smoke and this free roast any fucking day on this free motherfucking podcast. In the free trust tree. In the free ass friendly nest. In the no admission free ass motherfucking zoo. Okay, and there was a few of them who did that dumb shit. And I fucking smoked them. When they did that stupid shit. And maybe if you watch the video podcast, I'll probably try to put up some of the comments. And I'll put up the recommendations. You know, and fuck them motherfuckers. I'm going to leave their whole name in there. Fuck them. Yeah, man, I don't know what they thought they was fucking with. It's a public page. It's a public post. All right? Fuck you. Your shit's public now. Congratulations. Smoke and roast. You understand me? And people cursing me out and all that shit. They like to throw the insults because I don't know what what, what what they thought about your boy. But your boy got insults all the way in the holster. You know, and I just don't fire them off willy and or nilly. You know? You got to bring that spark to get this fire. And they definitely bring the spark, you know. So I encourage y'all to check out those comments bringing the spark. You know, people off top saying, fuck you. Now, when you said fuck you to me, did you think it was going to be some corporate cute shit? This podcast is free. So when I hit you with that smoke and that roast when you brought that spark, there's no repercussions. I'm not losing any endorsements. I'm not breaching any contracts. I'm not going backwards on any deals. I'm the chef. (laughs) Okay? I'm the chef. (laughs) And you're going to get this smoking and this motherfucking roasting. Okay, there was some dude I remember. There's a dude named David, man. Let's pull him a pull this shit up. Dude named David. He just came in hard body swinging. Fuck you. And this was a whole trans transgender topic. So, I came in swinging too, and and I said and I told him only if you identify as a woman. Okay, do you think David had a better comeback than me for that hot shit? Fuck no, he didn't. Because David is a motherfucking D-bag. It's D-bag David. All the way. I should have called him that too. Because I can do that. You know what I mean? People don't get it. I mean, this is not a robot over here. I'm a real live human being. Once you come out the shit swinging with the fuck you, I got all rights to hit you with this smoke. You already hit me with the smoke. Fuck you. Fuck you. All right. And then I had I had a few guys, man, 
who jumped in, dare I say, to my rescue. You understand? They see they seen these low lives, you know, trying to come at me sideways. You feel me? And they jumped in and they and they just threw your boy a life raft. You feel me? And I, w- I just want to say, I want to say their names on the podcast. You feel me? Because they came in pit bulling real hard for your boy. And I appreciate that shit. Those was real Hubies for real without even knowing they was Hubies for real. <laughs> you understand me? I think the first of them is uh, Jeff. All right. I don't know if I want to say the last name because I don't know how this all plays out. But Jeff, man, he jumped in on motherfucking David real crazy, real hard. You feel me? So shout to, to, to Jeff Pitbulling for your boy. You feel me? Let's see if we can let's see if we can find find any more. There was a there was another dude too who mixed me up with another guy's comment who said that I said that I had an 18 year old son. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, I don't even think I'm at an age yet where an 18 year old son makes sense to have. He saw me in this video, and I guess I'm flattered. You know, that he think I'll be looking like this at fucking 50 years old or something. For me, which is fucking crazy. But what actually happened was somebody at me, you know, and it had my name up front when the comment was being made. And he just doubled and tripled down that I was the one who made the comment. Because while he's using technology, he's helping us understand that he doesn't know how to use technology. And shout to Keith too, Keith S, man. Keith S. So. It was Jeff M. It was Keith S. right now. He was jumping in real crazy to shout to you. You feel me? Fucking the game up. And I appreciate that shit, man. Appreciate that shit. And there was some people who who just fucking uh, was jumping in with bullshit words. You know, just saying shit before they watched the video. They didn't watch the video. They don't know what the content was in the video. So and I could tell from their comment. And he jumped in. So I was telling them to quote me, you know, on shit. They were saying I was giving hate speech and all that extra shit. Telling them to quote me on shit. And they couldn't do it. So right at the point where they couldn't do it, I started calling them out on it. Yo, you found that hate speech yet? I'm doubling back hours later. (laughs) Because it's petty over here. I got time for the shit. I got time for the shit. It's Jeff time. For the smoke and the roast. And I'm jumping in like that. And this is just funny to me, you know. And that's why I do that. I'm jumping in later, hours later. Like, yo, you found that yet? You know? And I had some guys like Marcus T. Shout to him. Marcus T. Yo, they started jumping in at the dude, you know. Just to, to, to follow up. Like, hey, you found that yet? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The hot shit that you said you was going to find that was dead. Did you find it yet? No, of course you didn't. Of fucking course you didn't. You know, because you're an idiot. You jumped the gun. And that, and then you had to pay for it. You got to pay for it on the, on the world stage now, public. You feel me? Because you have to chill the fuck out. You have to. You know, your boy's a shooter. I'm shooting my shot. And then we had one from a dude named Rob. This dude Rob was doubling, tripling down on me. He was getting crazy. He told me he's smarter than me. <laughs> Rob, if you was smart, you would know that I'm the guy with the fucking microphone. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm funnier than you. When, as soon as you open your mouth, or as soon as you fix your fingers to type, you meet the chef. All right? I'm the chaff, okay? And you could get this smoke, and you could get this roast, all right? And that's what we gave to Rob, to the point where I was calling him Robbie Baby, my little baby Robbie. He's a little baby boy, Robbie. You know what I'm saying? Shout to Trevor W. Came in with the smoke on him. And I told Trevor, yo, the only way this shit could have got better is if you would have also called him Robbie Baby. And you know what Trevor did? Trevor said, be right back, editing, went back and fucking called them Robbie, baby, because that's what this podcast is. All right. No mercy for dissenters against the zoo. Okay. You're doing something other than complimenting the chef. 
Well, you just made yourself subject to the smoke and subject to that roast. Because let me tell you one more time, this fucking podcast is free. I could do whatever the fuck I want. And I'm the chef. And I want to smoke. And I want to roast. You understand me? Fuck. Fuck. Wow, I'm having so much fun. Commenting on these things, man. You know what I mean? Also, shout to Tim D. Tim D. You know what I mean? Some guy girl tried to come at me sideways on some bug out shit. Like, I just really don't understand what the goal was. You know what I mean? And she called me a token. Like, I don't know what that means. You know what I'm saying? So I called her a six-year-old. Her, him, him, her, it. A six-year-old. You have to be six years old. That's how I imagine them. You have to be six years old. The way you were talking to me have to be six years old. Okay? With a blankie. Okay, sleeping on the night like six years old. Okay, crying like a little tiny person. Because you're six years old, and I understand. You know, she made a point that I'm on here. I'm really on here responding to every comment. And she said, I'm, you're a real winner and probably a transgender yourself. What does that even mean? Did you just weaponize sexuality and that's why that's why you can't get people on your side you know what i'm saying you're weaponizing your understanding of sex, sexuality against people as soon, as soon as they speak against you you know and that's why you use a mook use a mook i'm saying that about you right now you know because i get the last laugh i have the fucking microphone i have the fucking microphone and speaking of is another dude let me see if I can find his fucking name. Who said that uh I'm just another fool with a mic? And that was fucking funny. Because I let him know that it must be hard for him to be a fool without one. Like a motherfucking animal. You know, because you can't fucking stop me. You can't. Like a motherfucking animal. Alright? This is me just doing this because it entertains me. Because this podcast is about me. It's about me. And I said that from the beginning. Okay? And I meant that shit. And times like this will let you know how much I fucking meant that shit. And if you think I don't have a huge smile on my face when I'm chaffing in those comments, you're wrong. You're so wrong. You know, people talk to me, they think they're about to upset me. Oh, you know, when you fire up your, your greatest comment and all of your fucking facts that you like and all your words that you like to use, I smile, I smile, I smile my face. You know, why? Because I get to put on my chat hat. Because this podcast is fucking free. Okay. And it's wonderful, beautiful, and wow. Okay, so all of that just to say, like us on Facebook, ReQB, ReQB on Foxy, Instagram, ReQB on Twitter, ReQB YouTube page, ReQB on your favorite podcast app. Give us the stars, give us the likes, give us the every fucking thing. Now help this grow so that I could get more people pit bulls for me in this cult. And just be able to tell the truth unhindered and unhinged. And speak to you. That's all I'm really doing. That's all I really need to do. Speaking to me, but I'm speaking to you. Because don't don't get it twisted. This podcast is about me. But sometimes it's about you. Yeah, definitely about me. Sometimes probably about you. Yeah. It's great.
And those people who gave me those one stars, they just don't know how much that motivates me to just get more of those one stars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> funny to me. Fucking funny to me. Oh, my life. This is really my life, you know. And when you tell it to people and they don't see it, they just don't fucking believe it. And it's not like the things that I'm saying are really, truly unbelievable. Like, just that this would be happening to me on a weekly basis to people is confounding. You know? But this is what it is. It's the honest truth of it all. You know, and I'm yawning over here. I'm fucked up. You know? And I'm going to have to get through the rest of my day. You know, like, I hope you're getting through yours. You understand me? Maybe I have my voice back by fucking man. Alright, Cubies. So keep talking to me. I'll keep talking to you. You know, but most importantly, fuck ya. Yeah.